My YouTube career was nearly cut off right at the beginning on that first video. An hour later, fucking police knocking at my door. I'm like, you bastard. That's because, bro, I've lived a life before. That's not the ending I was expecting. Grew up in Northwest London. Growing up, it had its challenges and we were all little shits in our own rights. Is someone saying, God, oh, do a wheelie or give it a burn up. Bro, you don't have to finish that sentence, I'm doing it. I got a, like a, a year ban. I didn't think I was going to get here, but I fucking done it. You mentioned back then your mum was around. She she was so, like, it's, it's, it's quite sad. But I do remember her being very proud. I've had to put on a brave face through certain times. She she was so, like, Jamie, we have a lot to talk about today and I'm buzzing because not only are we doing this podcast now, but we're also getting up to some fun tomorrow as we part are. of one of your videos oh, on wow. a runway, which I need to sign the disclaimer for. Right. Um, <laughs> if you die, it's not my fault. <laughs> and no doubt uh, people are here because they already know who you are. They recognize your face, would have watched your videos, either maybe one or two or followed you for the whole journey. But what I want to get into today and what I love to do with my guests is actually take people behind your channel to who you are and how you actually got into that position that you're in today with an incredible subscriber base, 783,000 subscribers, 171 million views. Is that how much I've got? Yeah. I don't check that. Is I that went, how much I've done? I went to the back and there was even a little line that also says we are on our road to a million. Ah, uh, so yes, yes, yes. I had yes. to get you on road to success while you're on your road to come a million. On. So I'm going to start off by asking you the question that everyone's posed with when they come on here, uh -huh. which is in your own words, who are you and what do you do? Okay. So my name's Jamie, Jamie Shonaga. And uh, yeah, I guess I'm a car enthusiast, a normal person who loves cars and uh, films my goings-ons with cars, I guess, YouTuber. <laughs> and I actually looked back, that started in 2018, yeah. which I don't know, now, I, now I'm in kind of mid... Now I'm nearly in my mid-twenties. To me, that feels like yesterday, but it's actually not. And it's yeah. the first time I've had in my life where I'm like, Christ, that was actually like five years ago now. But do you remember, because I checked this out earlier, what the first video was you uploaded to YouTube yeah, or the yeah. one that's still there now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clear as day. Clear as day. I, I remember everything about it, man, because it is, it is a, monumental, a monumental video for me. It was me testing the waters. Can I do this? Am, am I good enough? Are people going to like it? And yeah, man, it, it was... Um, it, what was the question again? <laughs> Do what, I remember? What car it, was it? What car was it? Okay, cool. So that's how you know it's going to be a long day, people. <laughs> I'm forgetting what he asked me two it's seconds. It's five o'clock as well. You know? <laughs> it's been a long day, but um, yeah, no. So it was my A45 AMG that I had at the time. Um, yeah, a car that I loved, a car that I had longed to own, but could never afford, which is quite interesting. I uh, I managed to to kind of I, I don't know about swap my way up to it, but I kind of. I had a few cars prior. I would sell one, add a little bit of money onto it, buy the better car. I think I part X'd my Audi S3, had an 8V S3 saloon uh, for the A45 AMG. And then that that was kind of my, um, that, that was the car that I started the channel on. It was the one that I would say at the time I was most enthusiastic about. Um, and yeah, it was, yeah, it was my baby. I'd, I'd always loved them. The styling, the, the sound. And what they represented, they looked cool. They were hot hatched. They had these big canards on them. That was this my first hot hatch. Oh, you had one too. I had an A forty five AMG. Yeah, oh, 66, okay. 66 reg, I think. Oh, what? you had the facelift then, white with canards and the aero pack. And I remember skidding it off the ice when I was like eighteen. Oh, into, really? Into the edge of a bush one. Day. Oh, right. you had it when you was eighteen. Yeah. Jesus, you did all right, bro. It was, it was, it was, a, it was a quick thing. But I always, what I love about the A forty five, and sorry everybody for buttoning already, but what I That's love. Cool love about the A45 is just, it's the only hot hatch for me that actually feels like a speciale lightweight version of the hot hatches. You get an RS3 and it's comfortable and it's got padding and all mm. the rest of it. And if you compare it to the supercars, the A45 does feel more stripped out and a little it bit does. lightweight. And yeah, it does. It does. It'd be interesting to know what they weigh now, but I definitely get that feeling, especially coming from an Audi S3. Now, the Audi S3, don't get me wrong, they're great at doing what they do. They do everything very well, but they're just not exciting cars. And I remember seeing A45s, like, dipping around. And, like, with a um, an S3 or a VAG, you get that DSG fart 
between, yeah. and it is like a brrr, kind of between gears, right? I'm taking nothing away from it. Don't get me wrong. Like I, I love that kind of stuff. I just know they get a lot of bad press. He loves but, fighting. <laughs> yeah, I love fighting, you know? <laughs> but the thing is, when it comes to the A45, I remember one, it went by me and it kind of, I think it had just come out of a tunnel and then round a roundabout. And it's, it's more of a snap in between yeah. the gears, like crack, like, you know, I was like, whoa, like, and the way he kind of like came out of the tunnel and then round a roundabout, like thinned. I was like, the grip levels and everything just going on right there is a bit of me. But I just remember looking at the price and thinking it's, it just wasn't obtainable. Like, you know what I mean? Um, but you know, like anything, if you put your efforts to it and you really, really want it, for the most part, you get it. Like, you know. And what enabled you to, A, be able to do that at that stage yeah. then? And B, where did your love for cars come from? What was life like growing up? And what was your first pivotal moment or memory with a car? Interesting, actually. I mean, so I'll, I'll, I'll to the the first one. Uh, the, sorry, the first question first. Um, I I basically worked full time. I worked full time as a HGV mechanic, and um, I just saved up, and then I financed the hell out. Of it. <laughs> I financed the hell out of the rest of it, and 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 that uh, enabled me to to obviously purchase the A forty five AMG. You were how old then? Bro, like I'm an old man now, you know. I know, I know I act young and all that, and the hat's down. That's because the, the hairline's back here now, bro. The hairline <laughs> starts there. That's why the hat's on. No, I'm joking. Um, but no, I'm 35 now. So I had that car when I was, God, it must have been 30. It must have been 30. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, 30 or 29. So yeah. quite a lot must have happened in, in the 20s leading, leading bro, up I've to that as well. I've lived a life, bro. I, this is the thing. Like YouTube is the small, not the smallest part of me, because I guess it's it's a part of me that, perhaps depicts what I love most, if that makes sense, and my biggest passions. But I've, bro, I've lived, man. Like, I've, I've lived, uh, like, and, and I think when people speak to me, and I, uh, when, when people see me on camera and they see that I'm a down-to-earth person and I haven't really changed since the first video, like, you know, perhaps I've got more enthusiastic because 100%. I've got more comfortable on camera, you know? Um, and that's because, bro, I've lived a life before. I, I'm well established in what I've done before. Um, the camaraderie with uh, workmates working in the garage on the shop floor pretty much like, I don't know, about 13, 14 years and then going mobile eventually um, in my trade. Bro, like, I'm, I'm one of the boys. I'm one of the lads. You know what I mean? Like, like YouTube to me is, it's crazy that it's even a thing. Like, you know what I mean? Um, but uh, yeah, man, I mean, yeah, I totally forgot what you said. <laughs> I'm just, I'm going off on some tangents, aren't I? Bef let's get back to the beginning so yeah. that we can build up for that because it's clearly we've just figured out that there's a whole period there in your 20s yeah, sure, yeah. where you're up to stuff and then there's the yeah. bit before that. So what, what I want to get is we're already starting to get a sense of, well, hang on, you were clearly hands-on. You mm. like to work on cars on your 20s as HGV mechanics. That obviously taught you a lot to where for you sure. needed to go to today, especially with yeah. tuning cars up. But what was life like before that? What was life like where were you when you were younger? Where did you grow up? And as I say, what was your first memories of cars? What got yeah. you into them? Were you a Top Gear fan? Yeah, so um, yeah, definitely a Top Gear fan. I think most of us growing up in the the, the 90s, the early 2000s, you had to be because there's not a lot of options. You know, there was no YouTubes there if you're a car enthusiast, you know, that and fifth gear. Um, but yeah, grew up in northwest London or the outskirts of northwest London, Harrow, uh, to be precise, Rainers Lane. And um, yeah, man, I mean, growing up was, it had its, it had its challenges, but for the most part, it was good. I, I lived a, or I, I felt like I was a happy child, you know, um, I only lived with my mum. Uh, my mum and dad divorced when I was young. Dad was still around, but he wasn't, he wasn't there there. And when you're a young scallywag like me, and there's no dad to tell you when you're doing wrong, he's not kind of, he's not there. Like, you know, okay. I might've seen him once or twice a week, <clears throat> sorry, once every one or two weeks, should I say. Okay. Um, sometimes not even that. But so basically it was just my mum, my brother and my sister. And we were all little shits in our own rights. We all had our demons. Like, you know, we put my mum through hell. Um, but again, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the time growing up, um, we put ourselves in situations and environments where perhaps we didn't need to be there and we didn't need to be involving ourselves in certain situations. So we got into, well, I say we, me and my brother, we got into a lot of trouble. Um, I would probably say I got into more trouble than him eventually. <laughs> so yeah, I had a bit of a, a troubled uh, teenage to early 20s, I would say. Um, but I think deep in it, like it was always 
harmless kind of fun kind of thing? Just lads being lads more so and kids being kids kind of, or should we say kids with nothing to do being kids? Yeah, I think that's, I've I've actually been listening to a few things about um, the problem with, I mean, there was even kids these days. I mean, I'd have never heard, living out in the sticks and the Cotswolds, you never hear of things like community centres and Mm. places for young people to go. But it's more, or it used to be more prominent towards the outskirts of London, especially mm. on a lot of the big estates, et cetera. There, there used to be kind of places for people to go, but in recent yeah. years, that's really dying out and it's just causing this problem where kids are really bored with not a lot to do. Yeah, I guess that is... I mean, I, I'm so out of touch with what a modern-day kid is now with all social media and, you know, how how, how people kind of lock themselves away um, and they don't see the outside. Like, you know, in terms of... You know, when when I was young, we used to play out on the street. Like, you know what I mean? And anyone, if there football. was a kid out on the street, yeah, you'd play football. Barely playing hanging taggers. together because the you know edges I mean? roughed off on yeah, the tarmac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was one of those. So, I mean, like, I, I couldn't tell you what the, the problem is today with the youth. I know they, they, there's a hell of a lot going on and, you know, there's many twists and turns as to why it's going wrong. But um, in my case, I mean, bro, I was I just, I'm just like back in the day, I was just one of those kids that like, if there's something going on, I'm up for it. Good or bad, let's do it. Like, you know what I mean? I was just, I'm easily led, but a lot of the time I'm leading. You know what I mean? It was it was one of those. But I mean, through all of that and going back to... <laughs> Not all the time I'm leading. Yeah, yeah, really I mean, my friends will be watching this if they watch it and they'll be like, ah, Jamie, I don't think you were led. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I was at the forefront of getting things done. But yeah, no, basically going back, um, throughout everything, um, I've always had a passion for... I think it started with uh, petrol remote control cars. So I, I used to love remote control cars, but then like my first taste of anything motorized was a petrol remote control car. And and then like you'd smell the two stroke. I think they run on like nitro fuel, which I think essentially is like two stroke kind of like there's a mix of fuel and oil. So basically you get that lovely two stroke smell. You hear the noise of it. You're ragging it around. And that kind of gave me a love for the actual as opposed to watching it on TV and reading about it in books, which I did get a few for Christmas and things like that and and, and obviously watch Top Gear. But going out there and chasing, owning things, if that makes sense. So I had my petrol remote control cars. Then I moved on to things like petrol scooters. And then before I was old enough, which is one of my downfalls, onto mopeds and things like that. Like, do you know what I mean? And and then modifying them, like, you know, little, uh, like, boring them out. Uh, like sports exhaust on them, like you know, like I can't even remember what they're called, like roller kits for the clutches and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, guys terrorizing the neighborhood. Yeah, 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 that was me. Oh, I'm a, that was me. You know, at like midnight, you hit. Yeah, I'm like, like you, what? The, like you know what I mean? That is me. Um, so yeah, man, Ugh, bro, we had many crazy moped stories, and and then basically, I um, I moved on to uh, geared one two fives, which I, I believe at the time, I, I know license laws are changing all the time and I believe they have changed but at the time you could ride a 125 on a CBT however there was a blurred line between if you could actually ride a geared 125 on a CBT and a CBT is basically your basic bike license yeah. which is kind of as long as you, bro you could probably crash and still pass it's one of those ones bro you know yeah our mate Brad got it so yeah, <laughs> must, that, must, that must be possible <laughs> so basically um, yeah anyway I was whipping around on uh, a Kajiva Mito <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Brad. Never met you, but shout out to you. You sound like a good man. Um, so I was whipping around on a Kajiva Mito. So that's a geared one, two, five, two stroke. And then I, I finally got my um, Aprilla RS125, which was kind of my, again, a bit like the A45. It was the pinnacle that I, I never thought I could own. Because yep. funnily enough, when I bought my, in fact, let me take it back a little bit more. My mopeds had always been dog shit. Do you know what I mean? They look like they're fresh out oh, of scrapyard. Okay. I have pals around me. Like the parents were buying mopeds. Unfortunately, like, you know, bless my mom. She couldn't afford it. It's, and tell the truth, she didn't want me riding mopeds anyway, because they're dangerous, yeah. right? And um I, like my mopeds were always, bro, they were just hashed together. They were quick as hell, bro. They was quick <laughs> as hell, but they were death traps. Like it's one of those ones. So you're telling me you bought something that wasn't quite right and made it quicker. That's right. Not a lot's changed. I spent my money on what counts. Not like, a lot's you know changed. what I mean? Making it go far. Zero has changed right now. <laughs> you know? Um and it was quite funny with my mopeds. Like, I'd love to say I was a good rider. I used to be able to pop a wheelie, Ace Calf. I used to go, like, because being from Northwest London or the outskirts, Ace Calf is like, 
20 minute, what, 15 minute drive, like uh, for me, or ride. I forgot about Ace Cafe. Ace Cafe used to be the one back in the day, right? Just caffeine and machine brand. Of yes, like... yeah, yeah, yeah. So people who know, let's take it back to like pre 2010, because I know they, they put a lot of restrictions in Ace Cafe. I, I believe they put loads of speed bumps outside the front. Things used to be wild. Like that used to, bro, like the, I, I'd been at Ace Caf when riot vans pulled up and dogs chasing everyone off down the road from car meets. It was, it was wild at Ace Caf. Um, unfortunately, I don't think Ace Caf wanted or condoned that kind of stuff because obviously it's bad news to them. But again, you know, people in cars, we get excited. We start doing stupid shit. And bro, Ace <laughs> that's I, and, and bikes, I tell you. That's a brilliant saying. <laughs> people in cars, we get excited. We start doing stupid you know shit. I mean? Bro, all it takes, yeah, for me, like in a car or on a bike is someone saying, God, do a wheelie or... Give it a burnout, bro. You don't have to finish that sentence. I'm doing it. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and I know a lot of us are the same. But um, yeah, so going to Ace Caf and um, yeah, just 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 kind of always uh, being around like-minded people and popping wheelies and you know, just just doing crazy finding shit. Finding your bikes. community. Yeah, finding community. And it, it pushes you see some, you pull up there and you know, oh wow, your 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 bike does what? 70 mile an hour. Mine only does 60. Fuck. What do I do to get into that? And then kind of you progress. And yeah, eventually I got my RS125. And my RS125 was fresh. I bought, it was the first bike I bought from a dealership. It wasn't brand new. It was secondhand. But it was as fresh as they come. I remember my dad come down to be my guarantor in the finance. He was like two and a half grand. Mate, I could not afford that motherfucker. I, I think it was like the deposit that I probably put on was probably 300 quid or something like that. Like, you know what I mean? Um, but I loved it. My dad believed that I was going to pay for it and I, I was going to pay for it and I did pay for it. And I loved that bike. Um, the only thing is I fucking stacked it so many times, bro. <laughs> like it was fucked. Um, and then the problem is I got a ban on the bike. I got a ban on the bike. Um, and I got a, like a, a year ban on the bike. And this is this is at the time. So 17 I was at, at okay. the time. And this is this is um the times obviously everyone's kind of segueing into cars now, you know. So I although I loved bikes, I was starting to really like cars. Or oh, I'd love I'd liked cars. But and that's through going to things like Ace Cafe meets and being oh, around Petro and it's just yeah, building yeah, yeah, that yeah. that love of cars. Yeah. But at the time, bikes were my thing. Do you know what I mean? Like cars are sick. Bikes were my thing. And um, yeah, w when I when I was on this band, all my pals started getting cars around me. So when I come off the band, I was like, no one's riding bikes no more. So I, I, I better get into this car thing. Like, you know what I mean? Love cars. And I was scheming the whole way through my band what it's going to be. But also being, I think at the time I turned 18, 18 coming off a band to buy your first car. Like, good luck getting insured. Like, you know what I mean? So it was tricky, but again, me being around the dodgy people that I'm around and, you know, knowing a man that can, you know, I had someone come and say, yo, Jay. It's like that in London, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. You grow, it's like, I know, geezer. <laughs> well, of course, bro. Like, you know, in the back of your head, you know, like, it's probably going to go wrong, but, you know. But dodgy Dave has got this. You know what I mean? He's got this. <laughs> so, you know what? In fact, I'll shout out to my boy, Jamie. Cause, yeah, was it Jamie? Have I shouted out the wrong person? I think it was Jamie. Or was it Jamie? I think it was my pal, Jamie. Anyway, <clears throat> long story short, he was like, bro. Don't worry. You can have a ban. It don't make it whatever. You can have as much points. Bro, you don't even need a license. I'll get you insured. I was like, all right, cool. 500 pounds. He said, I insure any car. I thought, oh my God. <laughs> my prayers are answered. Like, you know what I mean? I can have any car. Because these times I was, I was looking at um, one litre uh, Fiestas. And I remember, I remember looking on eBay and this, God, this is going back. Fuck. I don't even know. Like 2000 and I want to say it's 2006, 2007. I feel fucking old saying that, right? And I was I was looking on eBay. I was a fetus. Well, like, you weren't even born then. <laughs> no, I was 1999. What the fuck are you doing? I was like, fucking how old are you, bro? Man's like 13 doing this podcast. <laughs> well, that's a terrible by the way. But um, yeah, no, so I'm 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 looking, I remember, I still remember it because it's the first thing I ever bid on. And I bid on my girlfriend at the Times account, right? And it was um a one litre Ford. Um, Fiesta and it was like a max power looking kind of thing it had half blue half silver paintwork and to me I was like that looks fucking cool as fuck are you allowed to swear on it or have I have you just beeping the hell out of this we are going with it no of course you are of course you are <laughs> I proper lowered the tone of this podcast I fucking use this one. but um let's yeah. fucking go uh, don't <laughs> think, yeah, I, I don't swear a lot on my I don't swear at all on my channel so I need to get let it all out here he's bro. letting it all out do you know out what in. I mean so um no but anyway um so anyway, I bid on this car and I think I won it for a grand. I didn't have a grand, bro. I, I must have been dreaming. 
And I, I didn't get the car. And I remember, the, like, my missus kept, at the time, she kept, she was like, are you going to do anything with this car? And I was, I was, like, trying to give it a big, I was like, yeah, 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 I'm going to, just tell him I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm come get it, I'm going to come get it. Never come get it. So, anyway, long story short, now I was allowed any car, pretty much, that my budget would allow. And bearing in mind, my budget was not a lot, right? Um, I started thinking, right, what can I get? And, and cars of that time, which I really had an affliction for, was R5 GT Turbo. So Renault 5 GT Turbos or Ford RS, sorry, Ford Fiesta RS Turbos or Escort RS Turbos. And back then, believe it or not, they weren't going for the crazy premiums that they are now. So you could find reasonably priced ones. However, Renault 5 GT Turbos were still out of my price range. I found a lovely RS Turbo replica, an Escort RS Turbo replica um, that had basically had everything implanted into it from an RS Turbo. Probably a stolen RS Turbo. Okay, yeah. Got You know what I mean? And it just had everything on it. But it was a convertible. It was a cabriolet. So it had the RS Turbo side skirts, bumpers, engine, interior, everything. Um, which actually was my saving grace because I'll get to why. But basically, long story short, it was two and a half grand. And I went to buy this car up in, um, there's a place called Sandy. And I think it's um, near Peterborough. Okay. I think. Um, so anyway, went up to buy it. Mate, mind blown. I'm, I'm 18 now. I've just come off a ban. I'm driving a convert. So to me, in my head, I'm like, what's what's cool? What's more of a flex than an RS Turbo? A convertible RS Turbo. And I'm driving, little me, bro. Like, at the time, I, like, I'm 35 now. I don't look 35, you know what I mean? I'm getting up, but yeah, at yeah, 18, yeah. No, I wouldn't have thought. mate, I look like I stole this fucking car. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, I'm whipping around it. I couldn't believe it. It was 140 brake horsepower, very, very uh, minimum mods um, from the 1.6 Turbo. It had a Bailey dump valve, like, you know, so... Every time I change gear, whoosh, uh, bro, I just, uh, like, it blew my mind. All my friends were so gassed. We, everyone used to love it. Broke down all the fucking time. All the fucking time. But did that make you realise what's possible then? Um, yeah, I mean, it did. It, do you know what? It, just, it was kind of just an extension of how I had been going through life. It was like, <clears throat> you shouldn't really have it, but you've kind of somehow made it happen. You, you scrimped and scraped to make it happen. I can't remember how I raised two grand. I think... So were you working or were you getting money and just doing so this these, and that? No, no, no. I was working. So I was on an apprenticeship. So I I only ever had one job, as in one trade, sorry. Um, I went straight from school, and I'm bouncing all over the place. I went straight from school into an apprenticeship, okay. a HGV uh, uh, apprenticeship when I was 16. So I'm on apprenticeship money. Bearing in mind, there ain't no minimum wages for apprenticeship. I don't know if there is now, but at the time, yeah, bro, like, I was on... Four hundred pound a month, I think. Wow. Okay. But with inflation, that's probably like ten grand a month now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But no, like four hundred quid a month, bro. I would, um, let's say, I don't know. Like when you, bro, you spend that easy in it, like you know, yeah, what I mean? yeah. that's not a lot of money. So I was doing that. I was probably doing a few other little bits and bobs on the side, like you know what I mean, to make ends meet. But essentially, I think I took out a loan. I think I, I, I want to say I took out a two hundred, sorry, a two thousand pound loan. And then add five hundred quid from somewhere, and, I, and that's how I bought the car. Um, but it's 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 weird how my childhood worked because, as I say, my mum she worked really hard as a single mum, like you know. But raising three kids who've got wants and needs, you can't always give them what you want. Do you know what I mean? And somehow, like me and my brother made shit happen. Do you know what I mean? Like he would do his thing, I'll do my thing, and somehow we made it happen. And it just felt like an extension of that. It was like, okay, cool. I didn't think I was going to get here, but I fucking done it. Like, do you know what I mean? And it, it was, it, it felt cool and I felt blessed, but it was, it was never like nothing that I had was certified, bro. Like as in, <laughs> if it was always, there was always something a little bit wrong with it. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Like, it, it was never. Because you made it happen. You yeah, bro. Together. Like, you know what I mean? Like I might've got the RS turbo, but it was two and a half grand. Like, you know, for a nice one, it might've been five grand. Do you know what I mean? Like, right, okay, so yeah. you've got a version of the RS Turbo. Like, I had a version of my PEDS. As I say, before the Aprilia RS125, like, everything's a little bit wishy-washy. Oh, uh, you know, uh, old uh, John Down, he, well, he's selling his fucking moped. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's bit, it needs a bit of work. It's 500 quid. Like, I'm like, I can, afford, I can actually afford that. <laughs> and I'm on the PED. I'll work the rest out later. So it's always been like that. So when I was in this, I was like, it's sick. And do you know what? It, it was a lovely looking car. Um... But it had its it had his gremlins, like you know, and um, yeah, it ju it just felt like a oh, cool. I've done it again. I've I've made it happen, like you know, um, and that that was my kind of my real introduction into petrol headness or nism. 
Is that actual hedonism? That's I was, was going to say that, but I don't know if that's Shiro's, Shiro's thing. Did that, he make that up, or is that a thing? Put it this way: I don't think he's going to sue you for saying, okay, for cool. referring to the brand that. as the brand. We'll have to beat me saying it out. No, that's he probably love it. That is, it's petrol hedonism. Petrol hedonism. You can use that as a tagline, Shiro. Um, yeah. So that that was my my proper intro. Don't get me Into wrong. When, when when I, when I was when I was younger. Um, as I say, like I, I, I don't want to badmouth my dad. I'm, I'm t- in total contact with my dad. He loves the hell out of me, and we speak not as much as we perhaps should, and perhaps we don't have the relationship I would have liked to have. But I, because I didn't, I didn't have it, then lose it. I didn't know what I was missing. Does that make sense? Like yeah. I was like six or seven when when my dad left. And when you're that young, God, it's quite that. hard to remember. I still have my brother. He's quite a bit older than me. He played that father figure, if that makes sense. And I was very friends orientated. So like little friends on the street and all that, as long as I was out playing, I didn't really care what was going on. But as I say, because I didn't know what I was missing, I didn't feel like I'm missing a father figure, if that makes sense. In fact, I, I liked the freedom. Do you know what I mean? Because I knew that if my dad caught me doing what I was doing, I wouldn't be doing it anymore. Uh, you know what I mean? Whereas my mum, unfortunately, and bless her, she's out working all day. Do you know what I mean? She can't be monitoring us, like, you know, and she, she, she's just got too much on her plate. Like, you know what I mean? But back in the day, she actually took me to my first ever, um, like, car show, believe it or not, when I was about 10. Because she 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 was so, like, it's, it's, uh, it's quite sad because obviously, she, I don't know if you know, she passed away just a few years ago. But she was always, like, so inclusive of us. Like, so if I love something, she would get on board. So, Believe it or not, she took me to my first car meet. Oh, not car meet, car, car show. show car which show. was, at the time, I can't even... Where, where's that place in London that used to be the, the showgrounds? Not like, the like Edex? A, no, what did it used to be called before then? Oh, I don't know. You're talking to a 23-year-old. Yeah, so, <laughs> 24, um, actually. So it's kind of chill. I know people will be screaming at, uh, at the camera right now, but it's, it was um kind of uh, Chelsea kind of sides. It was like... Let's take our break now. Okay. Search it up I'll and Google, get the name. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right, we'll do that. So during the break, we got the name of it. It was... Ells Court, baby. Ells Court. So, yeah. So, dear mum, yeah, she took she took me to um, Ells Court. And um, I, it might have been a British motor show. I can't remember. But I remember sitting in loads of the the, the new upcoming cars. There's no modified cars, actually, believe it or not. Um, but, I, yeah, I just remember going round. And to kind of set a timeline on that, it was when the first Mercedes A-Class come out and the first Ford Focus come out. So what did they come out? Maybe like a... P Reg, so it could have been 1998, 1997. Wow, yeah, in fact, it might have been pre released for some of these cars, so it could have been the year was before that they come just out. Just you and your mum, just me and my mum. Yeah, so that that is a big was, memory. That's a great memory, but definitely before then, I was I I was into cars because obviously we wouldn't have went, you know. Yeah, but yeah. I think like it was kind of more from a distance. I would look at my my books that I had and obviously watch Top Gear and things like that. But um, jumping back to my RS Turbo now. Um, so I was driving around in this car and I, don't, I never had a crash. I, actually, in fact, here's, I don't want to jinx it. Fun fact, I've never crashed a car. Never crashed a car. And I've been driving for like 16, 17 years. Touch wood, right? Um, it's not real wood. It's not real yeah. shit. Yeah. We're fucked. <laughs> We're fucked. Vintage <laughs> country. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, anyway, as things are too good to be true, usually when your mate can insure any car for 500 quid, Never made a claim either. <laughs> yeah, uh, things were too good to be true. So what happened is I found out, oh, sorry, the insurance company, I think they contacted me and it, like the details that had been given to the insurance company were like mad. I think I was like 52 years old, had had my driver's license for 26 years and something wild basically. And it was asking for questions, like it was asking weird questions. And I think they had sent a letter or something saying, we're going to cancel your insurance. Like, and I'm like, shit, like, you know, but I remember, this just popped to mind now, yeah, <laughs> I remember I was, um, so I was with, um, I was with some of my pals in my car and this is how I knew that the insurance actually w- was actually valued at some point. Um, I was with some pals and I drove up to, um, some place in the countryside, uh, cause there was like a fun fair going on or whatever. And I remember going to this fun fair and it was absolutely dog shit. Cause we went there for the get, we thought it'd be some get- girls at a fun fair. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It's sounding weird, man. Yeah, it's sounding weird. <laughs> man, you're not saying it out loud, yeah? It don't sound I'm great. getting the word. <laughs> it do not sound too good, does it? Like, you know what I mean? Hanging around the fun. But anyway, um, so anyway, there's no girls there. And I remember leaving. And as I'm leaving, so I've got the roof down and I've got two of my pals in this car, right? I remember me saying, I'm young, I shouldn't 
I looked at a place yeah. in this car. And as I'm driving down the road, I saw police on the side of the road and they had pulled someone over. And as I was driving, I just remember this, yeah? Like, it's like every police officer at that moment in time all looked at the same time. And we all got eye contact with the police officer and they're all looking at us. And then I looked away and I'm driving. I was like, nah, that wasn't right. And then I'm looking in my rear view and I see them all run into their cars. I'm like, oh shit. But these times I've had the letter and I'm thinking, fuck, I'm not insured. Like, I've got to fucking run, innit? Like, so I fucking floored it. I've got like a kind of, I've come like, I think I've got out of sight before they've got in kind of like my, sorry, before they've got into their car. So I floored it. I thought, like, I fucking do a left, right, left, right, fucking park and run, like, you know, whatever <laughs> I got to do, yeah. And I fucking, I floored it. I took a left, took a right, it was a dead end. Oh, like, shit. They pulled up right behind me. I was like, fuck. So anyway, when they pulled up behind me, they're like, why did you run? I was like, no, I didn't run. I didn't run. I was like, I was just, I pulled up like there was a shot like right next to this dead end. I was like, no, I'm just going to the shop. And as I've hopped out the car, remember I told you it was a bit shit, pissing out fucking um, coolant. The floor, like <laughs> running. I was like, yeah, I just I had to get some water. I was like, saving grace. What? Yeah, I was That's like, bro, it just played in perfect. Like, you know, and um, they'd done their checks and I was insured. I was like, fuck, fuck hey, he's trying to fuck you know? <laughs> Jesus, I didn't think I was insured. But anyway, so yeah, um, long story short, that um, it didn't last so long. So the saving grace of that car actually being not an RS Turbo and the logbook's never being changed. It was an XR3i cab, right? So it wasn't in the same uh, insurance category as uh, an RS Turbo. Right, okay. So luckily, me scraping by, kind of just about making things work as I had previously throughout life, um, my mum uh, was able to be the first, uh, the first driver in the insurance. And I was the second driver, if that made sense. Insurance was still a mad amount of money. And um, I got insured in it. So I was still able to drive the car around. And um, yeah, man. That's not the ending I was expecting to that story. Yeah, you thought it was going to be a lot worse. I thought you were going to get nicked. No, 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 I was right, bro. I can believe it. Like, I mean, I'm pretty jammy, like, you know what I mean? But I understand now, though, from those stories, why that A45 was such a profound moment, was such, a, was such a big thing to yeah. actually accomplish yeah. and achieve. And a lot, so alongside that, because that's obviously in your late teenage years, you get into your 20s and you get out of your apprenticeship and then you're not continuing on that same road, engineering, figuring out basically how things go together and come apart yeah. and, and fixing up HGV, HGVs. And is that where you come close to a lot of mates or? No, no, not even. I mean, look, it's, it's quite interesting because, you know, a lot of people, um, their mates share the same passion or they, they, I don't know, through their passions, find their friends. Well, my, my friends, I've got a circle of friends, maybe a, like a, a circle of about eight friends. That, bro, I trust my life with. Like, I think the person who I've known the least amount of time in my circle of friends, I've known for 17 years. And none of them are fucking car guys. None of them like, got, like these, they're all pals from before car, like cars were a thing pretty much. And although at some points they've dabbled in it, they've never had that Nuts, absolutely, nuts. yeah, like crazy... I don't know what you'd call it, like a... Uh, Car spotter in a vibe. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Running yeah. down the road chasing yeah, something because yeah, you're so excited. When I, was, when I was younger, it literally was a case of that. But yeah, they, they none of them have shared my passion. So it's been a little bit of a lonely journey. But, you know, I was the kind of guy who would still go out on my own to car meets and meet people. I, I couldn't call them friends. But for the most part, we can chat, we can have a conversation and we're here together. Like, you know what I mean? So I don't feel like I'm on my own. Now and again, I would talk some of my pals to come sit shotgun with me, but half of the time they didn't really like it. So what did those pals think when you launched a YouTube video in 2018 reviewing your A45? Do you know what? My, my circle of friends are so long standing because they, they believe in me. I believe. They believe in me. Fucking better believe in me. Or what they were saying behind my back, I don't know. But to my face, they was like, yeah, give it a shot, man. Fucking, it's different. Like, you know, but give it a shot. Um, and yeah, I don't, you know, I've never sat down and, 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 and asked them that actual question. But I mean, for the most part, when I said, this is what I'm going to start, you know, I, there was there was nothing but positivity. And why did you give it a start? What made you decide to make a YouTube video? So <laughs> it was totally random, but I, I've told this story quite a few times and actually going back to my A45 and also um, talking about me going to car meets on my own because my friends, friends didn't share that passion. Um, I remember it was New Year's uh, 
two, so it was it was 2017, New Year's going into 2018. And at the time, there was a car meet, AMG Owners UK, I think they're called, or yeah, AMG Owners that. London yep. or something like that. And um, there was a car meet. They were doing a car meet at, I think it was Slough AMG or Slough Mercedes or something like that. And obviously having an AMG. I think I had been to one or two meets with them before. Didn't have anyone to go with. But I think, you know what? That'd be a cool way to spend the day at least of um, New Year's, uh, sort of New Year's Eve. Um, so I thought, let me head down there. So I, he I headed down there and... Um, wasn't a lot going on. So I was in, inside the showroom and um, Ricky from LLF, Living Life Fast, uh, he yeah. was there. And at the time he was, I want to say, and I can't remember, but I want to say maybe 20,000, maybe 30,000 subs. And I'd seen a few of his videos and I liked his, I liked his videos. Like, you know what I mean? For that gen that era, I I, I want to say in London or, or the UK, I, I don't know, but for Modified, for what my passion was at that moment in time, he was making some cool videos. Like, you know what I mean? He was making a lot of noise on that kind of, in the scene, if that makes sense. So bumped into him, got chatting to him. Zero on my own. He was probably chewing his ear off. He was probably fucking, do you know what I mean? Like, he was this clown. Like, you know what I mean? But just having a conversation. And um, yeah, man, uh, he, he was like, do you want to do a feature on your car? And I was like, fuck yeah. Like, you know what I mean? That'd be cool. I've seen some of your, your videos before. I'd love to get into that. So we met up. We'd done a feature which you're still able to find. If, if no one's seen it, go, go and search it. You see, but if, you'll still be able to find it. But what you'll also notice is it's the version of me that is not in tune with YouTube. Is It's the version of me who thinks people are going to judge me and the version of me that thinks girls could be watching. I saw that in your age 45 video. <laughs> so that was the first video I watched when I, I always do um, some some research before coming on. And I've seen your videos before, but I'd not gone back and like properly studied your first ever one. Yeah. And it's it's so funny to click the first ever one, then the latest one. Yes. And just see the difference in Whoa! <laughs> Literally that. Bro, do you know what the thing um, is? And that's camera. why I left it there. That's why I left it there. I, I it's not my best part of work, but it's it's a journey. It's a part of me. And I think it paints the picture and shows people starting. It wasn't always this polished. I'm not saying it is polished now, but I wasn't always this person. Uh, sorry, I was always this person but I wasn't always able to show my personality as well as I do now. And, and that leads back to, to uh, Ricky's video. I'm sitting there. I'm trying to be cool. I'm trying to, it's like, it is what it is. I'm just trying, I, I, don't, I don't know who's watching, but this is my first time in front of a lot of people. Yep. I need to look cool. Like, do you know what I mean? So anyway, so we've done a feature and um, I'm always like, or I was, I was very like worried about how people react to me. Would they think I'm a dickhead? Because it's, it's a judgment now, isn't it? It's like you see in the comments, oh, he's a fucking yep. bell end, or he's all right, or whatever. And nothing but positivity from what I could see. So I was like, yeah, that's cool. That's one hurdle. Like I've been put in front of the masses, and they didn't think I was an idiot, if that makes sense. So that was cool. And then um, after, I remember Ricky, and I don't know if he remembers it the same, but he, I'm pretty damn sure he said you should should give YouTube a go. Whether he said it in passing as a nice yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, Like, you know what I mean? Like, but when he said it, I was like, yeah, fuck it. Maybe I should give it a go. But I don't know anything about YouTube. I've come out of school with fucking no real education, straight into an apprenticeship to swing spanners, bro. Like, I I fix... I haven't picked up a video you know camera I mean? before. Do you know what I mean? I'm a diesel mechanic, bro. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know what the fuck a camera is. I don't know how to edit. You know, so that had its own challenges. But Ricky said, all right, cool. Buy this, buy this, buy that. And this is my, again, apology if he's watching and this is wrong, but I feel like he might have pointed me in the right direction and said, grab these and give it a go, if that makes sense. So I thought, you know what, I will. And um, from memory again, that was pretty much as much help as he gave me, but it was all the help I needed. You know what I mean? Because It I was probably, the beginning. I wouldn't, I, bro, I'm, I definitely wouldn't have been sitting here now, today, if I had never met him. Whether or not I'd be a YouTuber and whether or not we'd be sitting together a month from now or maybe a month earlier, I'm not sure. But, you know, the way life works, if we didn't have those interactions, if I didn't start at that time, we wouldn't be here, sitting here at this moment. So I can only thank him for that. And then I I took it up. I, I decided, right, I'll give it a go. The equipment he's told me to buy, I'll buy on, I'll buy on eBay. Because it's cheap and I'm fucking poor. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Again, again making yeah, it work. Do you know what I mean? But again, I say I'm poor. I wasn't poor. I had a fucking mortgage. Like, do you know what I mean? But I had X amount of money to dedicate towards this new wildlife that yeah. I was about to try and attempt. You know, what with mortgage bills, car bills, living bills. Like, you know what I mean? I've never been bad off. Like, after I've started earning a proper wage after my apprenticeship. Once I started to learn how to manage my money after coming through my 20s. Like, you know what I mean? I've always been okay. Um, but I, um, yeah, I, I, I bought cheap on eBay because I thought, you know what, if it doesn't work, I'll sell it. 
I haven't lost anything. Like, you know what I mean? I'd give it a go. So I thought I'll go out, I'll make this video. I'll go home and I'll watch it. If I look like a bellend, no one will ever know. I didn't look like a bellend. I didn't, feel, uh, I didn't think I looked like a bellend. So I, I done the edit. And then edit kind of come out all right, I thought. And this is for someone who has no editing skills. It took me so long to edit this yep. crap video, right? And that was another hurdle. So I watched it. I showed it to a few people. I was like, that's, that's all right, Jay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, maybe they really doubted my, my editing skills. Was that the A? This is the... That's the A40? My, yeah, so it's that one. Okay. Yeah. So that's Hidden my first, talent? Yeah, I mean... It's not bad. Mm, it's not that bad, That was my man. first ever attempt. And, and, and the thing is, bro, anything I put my, my heart into, I try to perfect to it to it i i like to do it with proud yeah be proud yeah. about what the finish so I tried are, my rather best. than giving a half-hearted attack yeah i try my best look, look i try my best but i watch that back and it is so far from so like i've i've progressed so far from there but you've got to start somewhere and i know at the time for me that was Big. something that i was kind of proud of if that made sense so anyway i put the video out and i thought you know what if people think i'm a dickhead I look like a bellend or it's loads of negativity. I'll delete it. Like, what's the worst that can happen? I can delete it, right? But no one really did. And if anything, it got it got a lot of positive comments. I say a lot. It probably didn't get a lot. I think the video probably done. That was all you needed. That's all I needed. I think it done about 4,000 views in about two weeks. But for me, that's 4,000 people have watched my video. And I've connected with a few people after because a few of them messaged me on Instagram. And I thought, you know what? That was all right. You know, the whole process from going out Filming it, editing it, and putting it out. I like that. I, I I really enjoyed the process. Did you have any idea at that moment that people could make a living from this? I had no clue. And I didn't care. I didn't care. It, for me, There's it was... no, nothing didn't, that I didn't, I didn't... I hope I'm not chatting shit, but thinking back, for my first videos, I did not care. It was just about putting something out, creating something, putting something out that looked good and people could connect with. Does that make sense? I, I wanted to make cool shit. That was pretty much it. And I'll tell you what, this my, my YouTube career was nearly cut off right at the beginning on that first video. Because believe it or not, you see when I filmed that video, when I was doing my drive-bys, I got into an argument with someone. So <laughs> I had my missus help me do those drive-bys. She's like, what the fuck? She, don't, she didn't want to be out fucking holding the camera while I'm ragging a car by. But she did. She came out with me, bless her. and. I've, I've kind of done like, I think I've done launch control on my A45. I think I've done it twice. And where I've done it. Out of it, LA, by. I didn't, was it out? No, it wasn't there. I know what you're talking okay, about. Fair. But it wasn't there. I didn't use the footage that I'm about to tell you right. about, right? So it was down a little quiet back road that was next to a park, right? But obviously, well, not obviously, not obvious to me, but there was people in that park. And there was a matey walking his dog in the park. And he's come out and he's come out guns Blazing. He's mad right? at you. Mad. I've oh, had this. I, I've had doing? that before in a car park. Goes, I'm a fucking police officer. I'm like, bro. Now, two things here. You're embarrassing him. Like, you're embarrassing me in front of my missus. For one, you're making me look like an absolute dickhead. For two, you have come at level 10. You haven't even come out to have a conversation here. You've come screaming. Like, you, there's no, you, you, there's no chance to yeah, have, yeah, yeah. like, to say, you know what, bro? Agreed. My apologies. I'm out of here. Like, you know what I mean? He come on the level. To, piss me off. I flip like, and I just started, what the fuck? Look, shut up, you dick. And I was like, you're not a police officer. And you know, people say that kind of shit. I'm an undercover police officer. This, that, the other. All right, mate. Like one of those. Thought nothing of it. Fuck off this, that, the other. So anyway, hopped in the car. And for my missus, she's like, no, let's, let's go home now. Like this, this, we, she was worried about doing these drive-bys anyway. I was a little bit worried about doing them because I'd never done them. <laughs> and that was that. And that was that. <laughs> Straight away. Fucking, she was like, I told you. Like, I was, uh. Anyway, went home, parked up. Luckily, I had a garage. So I parked my car in a garage. Anyway. Fuck this dickhead. Anyway. Bro, an hour later, fucking police knocking at my door. I'm like, you bastard. I'm like, fuck, this guy weren't lying. So anyway, answered the door. Police have come. He said, we've been uh, made aware that you've been driving recklessly. Uh, by an undercover traffic police officer um, that holds X amount of, I don't know, he's got accolades that basically mean by him saying you were doing that, that will hold up in a court of law. Okay. Like he, he's at that level that he said it, we don't need any video proof kind of thing. And I said, we're giving you a section 59 because of that. And I was like, I didn't know what that was at the time, but basically a section 59 for people who don't know means that if that car is seen driving 
in that kind of manner again, they can take your car. Or if I'm driving any other car in that kind of manner, they can take that car. Section 59 lasts, I think, a year. So I was like, fuck this. It's, it's, done, my whole, it's done my whole YouTube career. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, do I really want to do this? And I thought, something said to me now, Jay, don't like, like, I've, I've come up against adversity through life. You know, nothing worth having is easy. So, or nothing, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's... It's going to be challenges. It's going to gonna be way. challenges. And I've always had a bit of an issue. I can relate to that one, one I mean? thing. At the, that, that moment, a different thing, and I won't go into it, but I can very much relate to that, where you, you're doing something, you're trying, you're there, you're giving it a go for whatever, and someone just dobs you in. Because yeah, yeah. they can. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It almost because felt they like, can. Do you know what it almost felt like, bro? Like, as I say, like I got into a lot of trouble when I was younger. Um, and it almost felt like the police had done me again. Do you know what I mean? Like, I see it, they've put a stop to my new... They've put a stop to... So now I'm out doing something that I feel isn't harmful as such. Like, you know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. I know there's repercussions of driving fast on the road, but I pick where I do my drive-bys and things like that. And, and the road I picked, bro, it was so quiet. No one there next to this field. And it just happened to be the wrong person, wrong time. And it, to me, it was like, nah, I'm a rebel. Nah, they're not... This isn't like... I'm doing, I'm doing this. So I carried on doing it basically. And, you know, had I not, I wouldn't have been in this position now, which I'm so grateful to be in, if that makes sense. And that's, it, it kind of, it spiraled from there. And what did it look like a year after then, your channel? A year. So I, I can't remember, do you know what? I've been doing YouTube for a while now, so I can't remember the stats, but so I want to like say. 2019, 2020, pre, I want to say I, was, I feel like I, I was probably 100K by that year. I think I'd done 100K. I remember, I think I'd done 10 videos and had 10K or something crazy like that. Um, so I, I, I'm assuming I had 100K. Let's just go on that. And apologies to anyone knows different. But it was vastly different. It was vastly different. And, and, and talking about, do you remember, like, you, you brought it back to money um, and asked, did you say, mention money? Did you? When we were talking before doing the podcast, yeah. <laughs> no, but just a little while ago, like, did you say, did I think I'd be in a position... I can't remember what you said. No, I said, said when you started YouTube, mm. did you think that you this would be something that would form you a career? Okay. So, so when was that yes. light bulb moment? Okay, cool. So what was crazy is I think, so you get monetized at 1K subs and then X amount of watch hours, right? 4,000, yeah. So after I kind of hit that, I remember I got my first YouTube paycheck and um, I want to say it was 200, 200 quid. And I was like, bro, I just mean 200 pound doing what I fucking love. This is insane. And for me, I'm like, 200 pound? Bro, that's, that's like the sky bill. That's a week shopping. That's, this is all these things. And I'm like, this is, you can make money out of YouTube like that. And I'm like, and the craziest thing is, I am living my passion. Do you know what I mean? And, and I, I love it. So that was the light bulb moment. I was like, there is definitely money to be made on YouTube. But the main thing is, the whole time, it's like, this is my passion though. If money comes with this, amazing. But if I can make a living off this, just a basic living, mate, I've killed it. Like, do you know what I mean? Like if, if, if I can equal what I'm now earning at work, but do this, I am more than happy. And as the channel grew, that I saw- That time came. Yeah, that, that, that time came. To the point where I was at work and started making more from YouTube than I was making at work, if that makes sense. And that's when it was kind of, the it, it come to the point where should I be crossing over to full time YouTube now? Then COVID hit. And you mentioned back then your your mum was around. Would you mm. consult in your mum to make a decision like that too? Because it's totally new world to you. It's or, or were you very much you 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 look after yourself in a sense of work terms and you're on your own way? Bro, I'm so so hard headed and so like no one can tell me nothing. If I'm gonna do something, I'm doing it, bro. Like I am just I might I'm one of those people who I might come and ask you, but I'll, I'll be telling you I'm doing it. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? I won't be, I'll be kind of asking your opinion, but I'll be telling you I'm doing it, if that makes sense. So I, I don't actually remember having a conversation with my mum talking about crossing over full time to YouTube and how she felt about it. But I do remember her being very proud, if that makes sense, the whole time. Um, my dad, on the other hand, even to this day, even to this day, looks at me like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, honestly, he don't get it. He don't, he don't get it. Um, even uh, I'm out here driving a, a 911 Turbo S, like, you know what I mean? These things like, and I don't think he gets it. But he comes from an old school upbringing. Like, do you know what I mean? Like YouTube 
was not a thing when he was young. YouTube wasn't a thing when I was fucking young. It's not, it's it's weird, like, you know, but there there was, um there was a lot of support from my mum. My dad was never negative, but he was he never- just like, baffled. He was just baffled. He was, he was never on board, like, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, I mean, bro, it, it was a crazy transition from, from, from that first video to that first year, that the hundred K. But as I say, just as I was thinking about crossing over to YouTube, COVID hit. Sorry, yeah, COVID. I think it hit. Yeah, I think it. I think it hit around. When, when did it hit? Two thousand nineteen March. Uh, twenty. Or two thousand twenty. Two thousand twenty March. Two thousand and twenty. Okay, cool. Yeah, you're right actually because I was on two hundred. I think I was on about two hundred and fifty k subs. So I was like, all right, cool. I'm consistently earning a good amount of money now from YouTube. And you need to see that consistency come in before it's actually a viable yeah, option. Yeah, because ad revenue can be weird. It and, and, and if that's your only form of YouTube income, it can be very weird. Yes, 100%. Um, yeah, and then as, as I say, um, I'm making this consistently good money. And then COVID hits. And that's a problem because now we can't interact with anyone. We can't, we can't be out. It's like, do you know what I mean? I can't be out. And rightly or wrongly, I was fucking out. Like I was, I was out, bro, because again, it was a, an establishment thing. I'm, this is me. This is my life. This is, this is something I'm building. I'm going to be out like, you know, but without endangering other people, like, you know what I mean? We weren't, I wasn't having interactions with the people who might bring a car to me. Luckily I had just bought a new car. So I thought I'll go out and make content on my own on this car. And I had a few little savvy ways of making videos that, Sufficed, and 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 it was it was funny enough. I think it was the first month into COVID. I had my worst month in like a year on the like ad revenue, and I realised at that point that that was my worst month, and I still could survive if needs be on that wage without my full time job. So that was me thinking I can do this. Like you know, what I mean, this is as bad as it gets. Um, so that was a that was a light bulb kind of moment to say shit. I, I think this is viable. Like you know, what I mean, because it only built up from there. Back then, there was the ability on YouTube when you figured out, right, I can make this into a living. I'm doing this. My worst month I can still survive on. We're out here. YouTube is now my thing. There wasn't as many YouTubers. Or it, was, it was that point in which it was blowing up and there was so much you could do. So you had to come up with loads of methods of creating content. And we've got now like OG battles. You've done car reviews, flybys. There's all sorts of stuff that's gone into making your channel. Where did you get all your ideas from? Was it just like bang and then you just went out and did them? Bro, it's hard as hell. It's hard as hell. As you say, man, the, 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 the YouTube scene, although definitely now much more saturated in all niches, at the time it felt like it was saturated. Do you know what I mean? But again, it, it was, but not as much as it is now. And you have to be different. You have to create something different. And if you're not doing it different, you have to have your own twist on it. There has to be a USP, if that makes sense. So God knows where these ideas come from, bro. Maybe it was a little bit, oh, that's sick, but I can do that better. Or I think I can make this work and do this with it. Like, you know what I mean? So bro, it's like being a creative, you have to be creative. You know what I mean? So my mind is always, I'm an overthinker anyway. My mind is always ticking. Like it's, it's crazy. Sometimes I wish it wasn't. Um, the ideas just, they came from wherever they came. And um, would you ever go at ev anything? Was it just like, I'm going to stick this at this and see if it sticks? Yeah. 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 I mean, what, what's, the, what's the question? Would I have a go at anything? Would you have a go at any video that came into your head? Or was there a bit of strategy like, oh, no, I'm going to keep working this path? Or how did you play yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. It's I a mean, new thing. It's, it's a tricky, new environment. It's tricky because sometimes you've got to know your limit and know what your your audience want. Because for instance, I. I'll have people, or did, let's say a few years ago, you'll do review after review after review because that's what people like. That's what the subs are coming in. People are enjoying them to the point where people start saying, well, this is getting a little bit repetitive. This is getting a little bit boring now. Uh, same shit again. And then you're like, all right, cool. I got this. Let me try this. So then you try this, whatever that might be. And then people are like, bro, like, I want to see the reviews. And you're like, what? Like, Fuck, like it, it's it's so hard because people subscribe to you to see a certain thing, but when they don't see that thing, they don't watch, if that makes sense. Yeah, but when they they're watching, don't really unsubscribe. It's, it's, yeah, it's 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 really tricky. Um so it's it's a bit of trial and error. I've dipped my toe in this, I've dipped my toe in that, you know. A lot of people might not know, but I've they, they, there's a lot of little 
kind of things I've tried with YouTube. And if it doesn't work straight away, I ain't, bro, I haven't got time to invest into that idea anymore. So I'll keep moving and changing. But a, a lot of the time too, what I'm doing is adapting or evolving the, the reviews or the OG battles, changing slight things to keep it a little bit fresh, to keep it moving. Like, you know what I mean? So giving people what they want, but a little bit different. I think I know the answer to this. How competitive are you on a scale of noughts 10? Is 100 able to be said? <laughs> okay. So if you're... I, f I find this really interesting with the automated YouTube because I think some of them... Some some guys... you Sometimes you guys get put in a position by podcast hosts like me where you feel like you're treading on glass or like, oh, I'm not sure. But honestly, do you see other channels out there as competitors, I must outdo his video. I must outdo those views. I must, if I take this idea, I've got to be the one that's at the forefront of it. Do you look at it like that? Because it is now a business or do you just, are you, are, are you just in your own lane doing your own thing? So right now, no, I don't. But I think it's at my detriment. I think I need hunger because in my space, my niche, which is, when I say my niche, I mean doing what I do. Car reviews. Um, essentially car reviews and modifying my own cars. I want to say, but I might be wrong. I am the channel that is the biggest right now doing that within my niche. Like, don't get me wrong. I know, for instance, you've got your car wows or whatever, like, they, yeah. but they do what they do. They don't have a modified car series. And, do you know what I mean? So let's say like going back like three years ago when DMO and LLF were both doing what I was doing. We were doing very, very similar things, all modifying our cars, all doing car reviews. It's never jealousy. It's never um, trying to outdo them. But I would watch them, right? I'll see, oh, he done that. Oh, and he done that. Oh, shit, I've got to up my game. All right, so I've got to do something now. Like, you know what I mean? So I'm watching these guys. And I'm like, oh, shit. It's more inspiration. Though. Inspiration, bro. I'm watching, like, because at the end of the day, and I don't know if I've said this before, um, it, it, it was a very interesting thing to see free people of colour be the biggest YouTubers within their niche on the market, if that made sense, which we were doing that specific thing. And I'm always, don't get me wrong, it's like, it's, um, I have a lot of white friends, a lot of black friends. My mum's white, my dad's black. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's never, I never go more one side than the other. But, you know, black people, people of colour, notoriously, opportunity, maybe back in the day, maybe not so much now opportunity hasn't been as vast or sometimes you've got to work twice as hard as your white counterpart to get the same job or outcome yeah, yeah, yeah. or it seemed that way sometimes like you know and to see that free people of color were actually killing the game it bro it was a proud it was pr and to be part of that sick like you, know what you mean? have that little moment where you suddenly realized that you're like well hang on a second like we're doing that yeah I, I did but bro it, 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 like as i say free people of color that's not like oh yeah like you know black power and ah, fuck all that i'm not into that like it was just it was it just happened like and i'm like oh shit like hang on i'm mixed race i think rick i'm not sure ricky's uh, um but maybe uh, it was a reflection thinking back when, I was, back when I was younger like, I'd, if, if i'd have thought that i was in this position I'd have thought that this would have been more of a barrier than maybe it's been. Well, bro, when was the last time, apart from Rory Reid, in this modern day, you saw a black or a person of colour doing any sort of car orientation on any kind of mainstream platform? But yet you've got Lewis Hamilton at the front of his position in Formula 1. 100%. But look at the adversity that he comes up against, the racism, the this. He's the only one. The only Remember that. I can't think pre Rory Reid. You know? So to see that. I can't, know, I can't think about it. That, no, you question yeah, it. I and, can't and, and think about it pre Rory Reid. And I'm sure there'll be people writing a comment. And look, I'm, I'm, I don't feel any way about it. Someone that. will be there like, yeah, yeah. Well, there uh, was look here, Mike from the States. Yeah, 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 he smashed it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and look, I don't feel strongly about it. But growing up with perhaps role models that were white mostly, you know, and you know, as I say, half of my family's white, which is cool, to the point where I'm like, okay, cool. So on this modified scene right now, you you've got boys. three people of colour doing this. This is really cool, you know? This is really cool. Bro, it, 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 there's white people out there doing it, Indian people, whatever colour. But it just felt really cool. And so I was quite proud in it. And then seeing these guys pushing the boundaries, doing this, doing that, and even being part of that and being able to kind of build that and seeing that, you know, this whole, this, this, kind of this car culture is growing and I'm part of it and we're pushing it. It was sick. Like, you know what I mean? So as opposed to seeing 
envy or jealousy in that. I'm like six, six, six. But the problem is now Ricky's off doing his thing. He do, which he's like shout out to him. He's made such a success of uh, his um, like raffle games. company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then DMO is a businessman. He he does what he does. Like you know what I mean. He's got the ability to come on and make a YouTube video once every month, and it still bangs. Like you know what I mean. So shout out to him. But um, right now, I feel like I'm in a space where it's just me which I haven't got a problem with because it's like, cool, everyone's watching me instead. Like, but it was nice to have that little healthy competition. Do you know what I mean? It's just, all right, cool. I'm going to push because he's pushing and don't get me wrong. I will still push, but they might be able to push me a little bit more. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So do you think you'll get to that million subs quicker with them or without them? No, listen, at the end of the day, like, obviously it's nice to have the competition, but I don't credit them for my growth. If that makes sense. Okay. I mean, Ricky, I've got a credit for the beginning, 100%. Um, but I mean, just inspiration and being pushed, it helped, let's say. But um, yeah, a, a million subs is coming. Um, when it comes, I'm not sure. Would it have been quicker with them? Probably not. Maybe, maybe. You know how the algorithm works, bro? They might have watched Ricky's video, then clicked onto my video. Yeah, it's Do you know what I mean? Place. So it, it may be. I, it's, it's, it's funny because as a, before I began doing the podcast and putting it on YouTube. The, the question behind anybody's mind just before in this day and age, just before they start YouTube is, I wonder how much someone gets paid for 100,000 views yeah. or for 10,000 views. Yeah. And then you'd see the YouTubers be like, oh, I can't really answer it. Like mm. it's the weirdest thing ever. Yeah. Now you, now I get it, for example, mm. because... It's not always the same. It's weird. Yeah, like, it's, not the same. <laughs> it's not all the same. Yeah. It's, it's almost an unanswerable question because of how much variation there is between your channel and my channel yeah. and length of videos yeah. and views. Demographic. And it depends who's watching it, where they're watching it. Like, the type I mean? of video. Yeah, yeah. YouTube is a funny space, but you've come on again a long way since the days when you three boys were pushing yeah. to get there. And you're now a, had a massively round moment, probably as big as when you started that first YouTube video, which is you've just... You know, a dad. Oh, that's wild. I was going to say, you've given birth. I was yeah, like, give birth. Hang on, let's just stop that a second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah, bro. It's crazy. Crazy times. Crazy times. Because, you know, life for me has been, bro, when I want to do it, I'm doing it. Like, you know what I mean? I, I ain't, I, like, I've got my missus. But apart from that, like, my responsibilities are my own. Like, it's do you know the kind I mean? of guys like you told your mates. I'm having a baby. My missus is already pregnant. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> yeah, <literally. laughs> yeah, it's one of them, man. I mean, bro, I feel I feel blessed. And I feel blessed because my boy is healthy. And that's health is overlooked, man. Like the the, the things that go through your mind when, you know, you, your missus is pregnant, like, you know, you, you go through all these scans and they check for this and they check for that, and you start wondering and you you don't know. I mean, look, a, a kid is like is a big task like on its own, let alone a kid that might come out and have a disability of some type or this or that. So I'm blessed that he's healthy. Um, God, he's hard work though. I'm telling you. It's like, I went from someone who had, as I say, my own responsibilities and that's it. I do what I want to do to bro. I'm a dad with responsibilities. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like a parent and I don't really know how to be a parent. Like, you know what I mean? Um, but like anything, I'll throw myself in at the deep end and I'll make it happen. And um, for the most part, it's been extremely hard. It has been extremely hard, especially balancing that with YouTube, trying to support my missus. She had a C-section, a C-section, sorry. So the um, the recovery time on that's slower than a natural birth. Uh, they can't do as much. So you've got to be extra helpful. If that makes sense, oh, that's, that's what I meant to be, being extra helpful. Um, but things are getting easier as we learn the child and as he grows. Do you think this is a... Do you already feel like this is a huge moment for you, even work quite? Does it does it make you appreciate what you're doing even more, a little bit more, and and, and keep focus, or does it? Because it's what's what's different, I guess, is I I was always brought up. Um, I I did have things. I had a privileged background. My dad, when he was forty two, started a business. I think I must align with me being about eight years old so when I got in my teenage years. I had things, had nice things. Um. Uh, and and grew up never really wondering how I'd get my fishing rods on my reels. They just kind of appeared. Yeah. Uh, but which, so I was really fortunate with that. But I think that's also put me in a position where I necessarily haven't. I, I'm unbelievably fearful of losing everything. So yeah, I work yeah. very hard yeah. not to lose yeah. everything. But when potentially you've li you said before you've lived off four hundred quid a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, do you know, what? if yeah. this goes to shit, I'll make it work yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I don't know how how that works. Did you feel really protective of everything that you've you, you've accrued and got going? 
bro, do you see like you're extremely scared to lose everything? I'm extremely scared to lose everything too. Because I've I've built so much. I've come so far, if that makes sense. I have so much relying on me doing well, if that makes sense. And now I have a dependent. I have a little boy that, like your dad done for you, he made sure everything was there when it needed to be there. I want to do that for my son. I, I want to make sure he never has to want for anything, if that makes sense. And I think any loving dad would, or mum, dad, um, but I'll make him know the value of a pound. Do you know what I mean? Because I come from that and I can teach him it. Like, you know what I mean? And um, yeah, the pressure's on. The pressure's on. But the way I work is, going back to it, I'm, bro, like no one can tell me nothing. I'm so hard headed. Like, I, I, I won't let it fail. I'm, I'm that, there, there's no option to fail. Like with me, I, like, I don't care if, if the baby keeps me up all night. And I'm going out at fucking eight in the morning to graft, to, to do what I do. Because bearing in mind, I still film all my, my, my stuff. I still edit everything. Apart from the OG battles, the OG battles is filmed and edited by someone else. But I, you'll see tomorrow, I play a massive part in setting everything up and making sure everything runs. Um, but I'll graft. I'll make it work. Because not only did I need to make it work for me and my missus before, but now I'm going to make it work for my little boy. You know what I mean? I try and make him proud and try and give him the things that I didn't have. Do you know what I mean? So, so has there been any time along this uh, path to 780 something thousand subscribers? Because you seem so full of energy. Yeah. It's like you're a walking monster energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're always driving forward. Was there a moment during that process where you weren't driving forward and you, you actually thought, shit, this YouTube thing's like, like really hard? Or, or you ever yeah. felt like doing something else? Or has it always just been 100 mile an hour forward? So it has always been a hundred mile an hour forward. If I'm honest, I, I I push on and I've I've never looked back. And luckily, it has went from strength to strength. It's had its times where it's plateaued and went slow. It's, I've never felt like I've been taking backward steps. Um, but yeah, man, for for the most part, bro, it's yeah, it's yeah. I've been I've been pushing. I've been pushing as hard as I can, and it's just yeah. I just don't look back. It's I, I have had moments, bro, where it's like I've I've said this before. So you look at YouTube view, you might be able to relate to this too. You look at YouTube view, views, or if you go back and look at my YouTube views per video, if one of my videos gets a shit amount of views, that's how I'm feeling for that day. I'm feeling shit. Do you know what I mean? Until the next video drops. If that one does shit, I'm feeling double shit. If the next one does shit, I'm like, we might have a problem. Like, you know what I mean? Now I'm in, I'm feeling some type of way. But if I do a good video and it bangs, that's how I'm feeling that day. And, and with my or within my niche, because I put out videos that suit some type type of people and then others that perhaps won't. For, for example, I put out a Porsche video. If you love Porsches, shit, you're going to watch it, right? If I put out a Nissan video, but you like Porsches, you might not watch it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it can be very up and down unless the video is just so sick, like, sick and crazy that everyone's watching. So my mood can be up, down, up, down, up, down. Luckily, I feel like I'm in a good place for my, my mental health, but I know that someone who perhaps might not be so could really be affected by that. Um, so it is a very up and down kind of... And do you think that's because of your upbringing, having to be so resilient? Yeah, and like, you know... we so People don't talk too much about actually having... I know Piers Morgan does, to be fair, yeah. which is, do you know what? You actually can be a tough bugger. You can learn yeah. to be a tough bugger and yeah. be strong. And I'm kind of on that that, ban, yeah. that bang wagon as well. Like sometimes yeah. strength is learned and that will help 100%. stuff along the way. But you, you've got to also experience a little bit of desperation at some point to really understand what mental health is, I think. Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, I'm my emotions are quite closed in when it comes... My, my missus always says, you're fucking emotionless. Like, you know what I mean? To my detriment. Like, you know what I mean? Um, because maybe I close them in. Maybe I just deal with them well. Like, you know. But, I mean, doing the YouTube... Doing YouTube and trying to create and trying to please everyone. And... It, a reflection of you not pleasing everyone is your video doing poorly, you know? So it kind of makes you question, are you, are you doing well? Do you know, are, are you like, are you, you, it's kind of like your, it's like a boss. It's like your boss. Your boss gives you a, let's say a bonus when you do a good job, but he fucking, he shouts at you when you do a bad job. It's almost the same with YouTube. Like, you know, when you're doing well, the views are sick. Everyone's loving it when you do shit. Money's good. The money's good. When you do shit, it's, it's completely flipped on its head. So like the people are my judge. 
They are my boss. Do you know what I mean? And I always like to please. So like it does my nothing when I'm, I'm not pleasing because I, I put a lot into my videos. I try to put my all into to, to my videos. But going back to it, I mean, throughout my whole life, I've always been amazingly positive, like optimistic, even in a shit situation, bro. Like, all right, cool. I might be down for a minute, but I'll bounce back. And then it's, I'm just an upbeat person. Um, so going to film and being able to hop into cars and do crazy shit for a living, bro, I'm blessed. I'm happy. So when I'm, when I'm behind the wheel of a car, I just let my emotions out. And, and, and being happy is, it, 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 it's no, like, it's, I feel free when I'm behind, a, like driving a car or whatever. So like having this crazy, like that, that is, it's not hard for me to do. So your energetic, unique on-screen persona, that's how you are when you come home. Yes. In times where it's time to be energetic and excited. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to be sitting at home watching TV. Yo, fuck it. Do you know what I mean? Like, come on. Like, but if I'm out with my boys and we're cracking, bro, come on. I'm jumping all over the place. Something funny is going on. I'm That's just how I live. I like to have fun. I like to have jokes. Like, you know what I mean? Obviously for, for the camera. So the thing is with, with, this is what I feel like some automotive YouTubers might lack, right? We're driving these crazy cars. We drive it. We, we, do you know what I mean? We're, we're living. We're living people's dreams. We're driving, and then people are there. Mm, he's right. You're speaking monotone. This, that, the other. I'm like, fuck. These people need to be able to feel what I'm feeling through me. I've got a shot. Do you know what I mean? But I'm gonna let my emotions out how they need to be let out. Like you know what I mean? And I think maybe at the beginning people thought I was a bit of a bell end and a bit of a dickhead, <laughs> and which is fair, like because they didn't get to know the full me. They just see this guy, oh my fucking God. Like, you know what I mean? They just see this person. They haven't had a time to connect with me. And I feel like once they, they come on this journey with me and they realize who I am, they feel like, oh, this guy's all right, actually. And you know what? He's actually doing, he's doing all right. And we feel it through him. Like, you know what I mean? So for me, I, I feel like it, it's such a key thing to be enthusiastic behind the camera and, and don't hide your emotions. Like, you know what I mean? So going all the way back to your, your, your question, it's not hard for me. To, to get behind that camera every day and be excited. Don't get me wrong, I've, 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 I've had to put on a brave face through some, you know, through certain times. But still, as I say, it's my passion. So I fucking, yeah, I, I'm blessed and I, and I let it be known. And you've currently got a what brake horsepower 911 Turbo S? So it's about 900 brake. <laughs> it's such a, I wish time travel was a thing. <laughs> this is not the powerful one. So... The last one was more powerful. <laughs> uh, we, what's so mad is if you'd have put that Turbo S in front of the lad that was in his two and a half grand RS Turbo Tarp, Turbo that crazy lot insane but do you think it's the same feeling do you think that win feels like this win or does it feel no. different I tell you what I tell you what this win doesn't feel as good as my first Turbo S so my first Turbo S was the one so going back bro as I say like me and it's been a whirlwind journey these last five years. So fast that I haven't had time to stop and think, fucking hell, Jamie. You've just went from financing your tits off on an A45 to, I can't remember what I got after, maybe a gold fast. So it was a bit of kind of a sidestep as opposed to up. To an M3, to an RS5, to 911 Turbo and an RS5, to now my, and, and many other cars dotted around that, but these are my, my main cars. And I'm like, this, this is insane. Like, I am that person who had to scrimp and scrape, you know, although again, I worked hard in my career. There wasn't money. There wasn't 911 Turbo S money left over. There weren't M3 money left, left over. Like it was just about A45 AMG, third hand fucking half decent mileage money. Do you know what I mean? Like to be at this position now, bro, it, it don't even make sense. And I, I, I don't even want to, I don't want to, what's the word? Like, Everyone should know their own value. And we, 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 we all, for one, a, a car doesn't make a person. Let me just make that right. Like having a nice car doesn't mean you're a nice person. Like, or it, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean you're anything special, but for me. It doesn't me, mean you're legit either. It, yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, exactly. With so much smoke and mirrors, bro. Like half of, the, half of these nice cars, people don't own anyway. But for me, being my passion, being my love, they're milestones. They are big milestones in my life. And when I first got my, my 911 Turbo, bro, I'm like, I'm driving a fucking supercar or 
an everyday super, whatever you want to go. This car costs more than a hundred thousand pounds. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't like, it was that moment that I was like, this is stupid. This is, this, this don't make, like I shouldn't be doing, not imposter syndrome, but almost imposter sy Overwhelmed. syndrome. Overwhelmed. Yeah. Yeah. This, this is, this is Jamie, bro. This is Jamie from the, do you know what I mean? My, my, my pal's like, bro, this is crazy, bro. You're in a turbo S. It's like, I, I don't even know, like myself, like, but anyway, it, it really hit hard when I got that. The second one never hits as hard, right? But still feel absolutely blessed. Like this is, it's the 992, it's the new Turbo S and it's 900 brake horsepower. It's, as I say, it's been a crazy journey. So, so much to the point where I haven't even had time to catch up with myself. Do you know what I mean? I, the, the, the whole reason, and I think your, your story kind of emulates literally exactly why I want to do this podcast going forward, because there's so many people. My mum was brought up in quite a negative environment where she was always told she couldn't do something or wasn't able to do something. And when that's hammered into you, it's, you just end up believing it. Yeah. And it takes stories to come out like this for the kids that were in your position when you were growing up, gimping and scaving and getting onto yeah. a, a scooter and maybe involved in a little bit of trouble and thinking, how the hell could I ever get out of this or yeah. turn it around and all the rest of it? So I should be like, no, no, this is legit. This can actually happen. 100%. But like, you've got to remain positive and you've got to believe in yourself. I think, bro, what it is, is and, and now in this day and age, social media, anyone can make it. Anyone can make it, but it does take determination, consistency and hard work. And that might sound absolute, that might sound like a fucking old man speaking to a child right now. But like, honestly, to, to everyone at home, this shit does not, like happen itself you have to graft you have like i've put everything i have into this um to make it work and as i say with the opportunities nowadays like don't get me wrong very saturated but if you are doing something slightly different you need to be if you've got your niche if you are able to put in the work dedicate your life to it you can make it work man i shit you not like there was a great saying that um when I used to do podcasts, which I would love to get back into. Oh, I remember. Yeah, yeah man. I, I had some cool people on and I, I had a guy who come from um, Broadmoor Prison. His name's uh, Ben Hatchett. He's actually quite big on socials right now. He's a bare knuckle boxer now. So he wasn't not long out of prison and he had got a, um, uh, a sentence which was a, I forgot what you call it, but it's a sentence where you don't know when you're coming out. And Broadmoor Prison, which is an insane, yeah. it's like awful, for the criminally insane, right? So he actually done like, say maybe 10 years there and he got out and um he done loads of like amazing stuff that he, he shouldn't have been able to do in there which kind of allowed him to flow into this like uh, a space outside of prison where the spotlights on him and he was doing good things and he was able to build ben hatchet as a kind of a personality straight off the bat i think he read it uh wrote a book and of the law of attraction and things like that and we spoke about things like that and i don't get too into all that kind of stuff but he left me with a saying that kind of stuck and, and i think it's true because it's happened you know it's happened many times with me throughout my life and this is because if i if i'm really focused on doing something i've generally made it happen but the saying is if you see it here you can hold it here and and that is that's what I've been able to do. You know, it, it might take its time. Dream it, believe it, achieve yeah. it. And, and it's as simple as that. And I feel like that that goes with everything. And it's not just sit at home, dream it. Oh, all right, cool, I'm going to do this. And oh, shit, there it is. It's no, I can do this, but here's how I'm going to do it. It might take a while. It might take a year. It might take two years. But if I do this, do that, do that, put in the work, I can fucking make it happen. Like, you know what I mean? And so far in life, everything I've really set out to do and put my mind to, although they're little wins, maybe even like, as I say, like fucking buying a 400 quid ped back in the day. Like, you know what I mean? When I had zero in my bank account, I've made work somehow. Like, you know, we in a deal doing it. Do you know what I mean? But that's what people need to be able to do nowadays. Like you need to, you need to be able to put in the graft and believe in yourself, right? You know? Jamie, I think it's an amazing story and one that definitely, if you're a young person listening to this, that is maybe looking for a little bit of inspiration, this is the one for you. Yeah. I'm so looking forward to our day out tomorrow. Yeah, I'm yeah, also yeah. so looking forward to seeing you hit your next target, a million subscribers on Thank your you. channel. Um, I'm sure you already know what it is, but please go and check out Officially Gassed and maybe scroll back to some of the videos and take a little look at the comparison based on what we we said today in the podcast. But yeah. again, appreciate coming on. Okay. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, take a look at some of the other podcasts we've done if you haven't seen them before. And we look forward to seeing you again for another episode. Amy, thank you very right. much. My pleasure, man. Nice one.